Okay, welcome everyone. So, we have so far studied optimization from a uh, perspective of characterizing the solution of an optimization problem, but we have not considered the question of how does one compute such a solution. So, today what I will talk about um, and uh, is, is, the is the basic ingredients of algorithms for computing solutions of optimization problems. Now, algorithms comes in, uh, algorithmic development in optimization has happened ever since the uh, history is ever since the subject itself was studied. So, there is a very long and varied history of this subject. So, we will not have the time to cover all, all such algorithms, but what I want to, to get a sense of are the various types of algorithms or the various flavors of algorithms that are, that are uh, classes of algorithms that are out there, uh, uh, out there today and the kind of ideas that underpin such uh, such classes of algorithms. The other thing I want you to get a flavor of is the kind of issues that arise in practical uh, optimization algorithms. Uh, it is often very easy to think of algorithms um, as simply an iteration and, and analyze them simply on paper, but usually uh, when one practically implements them, the, the kind of corner cases that come up require some special special attention. So, I will shed some light on, on a few, pra few such practical issues also as part, uh, as part of this. So, this in this, in this module of, uh, of our course, we will, uh, that is what we will be focusing on. So, to begin with what I want you to, uh, uh, what I want to talk about uh, is simply I'll optimization without any constraints. So, we will be talking about opt what we, what you would call unconstrained optimization or optimization over open sets, but, uh, but for us simpl for simplicity we will take the open set to be R n. So, we will, uh, so there is, uh, so we would have, we would be looking at basically a function, a function f that you will be looking to minimize over the entire space. R n and we will be, so we will assume that f is, f is c 1. So, it is, uh, it is continuously differentiable, ok. Now, the simplest idea that you can potentially use is in optimization is, is what is called line search. Now, what is so, before, before I tell you this particular idea, I should actually let, let us first get a sense of why uh, optimization uh, algorithms or, uh, are, are a subtle matter and uh, why is it that these algorithms require, uh, why do we even need to uh, be careful about how we think of algorithms. So, when I, when we do analysis, we or when I draw a picture of the function like this on the board, uh, something like this, I am effectively giving you the, the graph of, I am giving you the graph of f and I am giving you at one glance how the function f looks over the entire domain. Now, this, this view is usually not present in an, for an optimization algorithm. An optimization algorithm would work on, uh, in a query mode. What does what does that mean? It, it would it would query the function for if if you you it takes an x and queries sends this as a query to f and then what you have is a, a routine which will return you the value of f of x. So it is possible to query the value of f of x and get it for very any particular value, any, 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 any candidate x that you pick. What you do not have is this kind of bird's eye view, where, where the entire graph is, is, uh, is listed for you. Even if you, even if you wanted to construct it, what you would need is, is the value of f for every possible x and there are infinitely many such x's, right. So, the naive way for optimization is to uh, approach for optimization is that 
you try and graph out the entire function to some degree of approximation. You cannot plot, you cannot evaluate it for every point. So, you say well let me evaluate it over a grid of points. Uh, say there are, uh, uh, so you suppose you are evaluating it from 0 to 1, you make uh, let us say this is 0, this is this is 1, you are evaluating it from 0 to 1, you make a fine grid say of 100 points suppose and evaluate the function at each of these points, assume that there is um, that you can interpolate between the end points of the function or some such way, you create an approximation and then search over these points over that approximation or search over these points to get an approximate minimum answer. The trouble with doing this is, is that this works ok when the number of variables or the dimension n here is small, right. If the dimension n here becomes larger, then the number of points that you would have to make become starts growing exponentially with n, right. So, if you have, if you are in 0 1 and you decide to make a grid of of 100 points, you would need 100 points, a grid with uh, where you need, where you subdivide 0 to 1 into, uh, if your accuracy level is 10 to the minus 2, then you would need 100 points. But if you are, if you are in 0 1 square, suddenly you would need 100 square, 0 1 cross 0 1, then suddenly you would need 100 square points or and more generally if you are in 0 1 to the n, you would need 100 to the n points. So, you can see this sort of approach to optimization where you sim where you do what you would have uh, what you were attempting to do on 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 paper which is simply graph out the entire function over the graph out the function over the entire space and and try to compute. Uh, um, uh, try to compute the value of the function on the um, on a grid of points and then from there evaluate uh, basically just list out the values and pick out the least possible value. This kind of approach is not feasible uh, computationally at all because uh, when the dimension becomes larger. It is the it is the uh, it is today considered the approach of last resort essentially you would not want to do this as uh, un, un, if you have any better option right because the number of function evaluations you need is is ridiculously large second uh, so so one, uh, this is one so in addition to this there is also the fact that you have not made any use of any of the theory that we have developed uh, uh, about optimization right we have developed kkd conditions we have developed conditions for uh, for a function to be a, a minimum and so on. It this 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 way of graphing the function and then simply selecting the the least point makes no use of any of that. So it it's actually uh, it shows you how how generic this is and how uh, and as a result uh, how you know potentially inefficient uh, inefficient that it could be because there are there are many more things that you can make use of which you have ignored in this approach. So, what we would uh, the approach that we will we will take is 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 that of search. So, what does search mean? By by search I mean that we will be we start out at some point and then we query the function. The query reports back to us the value of the function. Some in some cases it may report back to us more. You could ask for you could ask not just for the value of the function, but you could also ask for say the derivative of the function, the Hessian of the function, um, or a, you know some or any other such information about the function. Depends on what kind of properties you have and what are you allowed to query. Now, in uh, suppose you are uh, uh, suppose so what we will do is you would uh, you you start out at a point, you query the function to get get these uh, vital stats about the function its its value its derivative etc then from there make an educated guess about where you should be going okay you started out at this point which which is kind of arbitrary to begin with but then based on where, uh, based on the information that you have got about the function and its derivative you get a sense of where you could where you could where you should next go what does that mean? You try to create in using this information a model of the function around this point, 
So, you could try to create a model of the function in a neighborhood of this point. And then we say ok well uh, now based on this model where should what should I be doing and that based on that you select the next point and the next point and then having selected the next point you again query the function at that point you you uh, you uh, you you get values uh, of, the, of the function and its derivative at that point and you create a new model. You revise you create a new model and then decide where you, you should next go ok. Now, by when I say we create a model and so on these are not very com uh, complicated models usually what we are saying is we are we are we are using some sort of a, uh, a, a, a heuristic which says that we will be moving say for example, along the linear approximation to the function right we, we, we take the function to be equal to its linear approximation that is our model and then we move in that direction and then and uh, and then we move for a step further in that direction revise our model move a step further and so on. Now, every such approach will be only as good as the model. So, we cannot obviously trust our model too much to we, we so we would want to we so therefore, this kind of an approach works in baby steps you start from a point you create you have a model say for example, you have you take a linear approximation you use you trust that model to work in a certain neighborhood. So, you take a step uh, that is not too large within uh, using this particular model reach a new point and then revise the model and then take another step and so on. So, this this leads us to an iteration that uh, and what we uh, what we want is that the limiting point of this iteration the limit as n ten, uh, as the number of iterates goes to infinity of this particular iteration converges converges to the minimum of the function. So, this is the mathematical property that we are looking for. So, what we usually what one looks for is that you, you that these iterations end up verifying at least the necessary conditions of optimality. So, it should satisfy all the necessary conditions of optimality that you can say about this particular function class that you are considering. So, for example, if the function class is a differentiable function then we would want that this this sequence of iterations say x uh, say x k we would want that this sequence of iterations converges uh, converges to an uh, to an x star such that gradient of f at x star is equal to 0 right. So, this this, uh, the, this is the, the the flavor of results that we are looking for all right ok. So, the first type of algorithm of this kind of this category is is what is called the what are called line search as I mentioned here line search. Now, what is line search? So, line search essentially does the following that it looks at this uh, looks for uh, it looks at an optimization problem uh, uh, of this kind. So, you are minimizing a function f over the entire space x in R n it starts out at an at a at a current iterate x k and then updates x k by by looking at how the function behaves along along a uh, along uh, along the direction al uh, along a linear uh, along a linear approximation where the linear approximation is obtained by where the linear approximation is obtained by by using the gradient of the function right so so let us define so let me raise this and let's define the following uh, let's define the following so define phi of alpha as f of xk plus alpha times pk where alpha is some is 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 greater than 0. So, let me uh, let me def, uh, explain what each of these terms are. So, x k here is your current iteration current iterate ok current uh, iterate or estimate of the minimum. P k 
is a is pk is a direction is a direction in in which is a direction in which we will search for a better iterate. Now, alpha here, this is what we call step size. Okay. What is this step size? Step size tells you the extent or the distance uh, or the uh, you would like to travel along this direction pk to get to the next iterate. Okay, so alpha, the step size is what does it capture? It captures the extent to which you. travel from x k in direction p k to get x k plus 1 all right okay so what we have done is we have uh, we parameterized the next iterate by by this by this step size and the the entire idea of line search is to keep is to pick the right step size and the right direction okay all right so let us uh, let's uh, let us do take this one step forward now okay so a typical line search algorithms what what they would do is they would keep trying out values of alpha so what so Okay, so before I tell you that, let us let us actually see what we would want to do. So, suppose you are uh, suppose we have a function, this sort of function, and suppose you are at a point like this. You 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 and and this is the direction. This is the direction p k that you have. We are at a point x k here. This is and p k is the direction pointing to the right. Now, what you would like to do is travel is to start is starting from x k you would want you want to travel in the direction p k and the question you are faced with is how much should I draw? How much should I travel? So, you could start you, you could say well let me go. So, remember p k is simply a direction. So, there is no scale to p k. So, you can you you have to actually define the scale um, uh, and the extent to which you want to travel in that direction using using the using the uh, using the term alpha right so suppose you suppose you move until here say okay suppose you move until here now until here you are getting a, you are getting actually a decrease in the function right now you could uh, and, and and you could you could stop here and say well okay i have got enough decrease and 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 then and then uh, revise the model or you could say well let me let me uh, let me i i've got so much decrease everything looks great let me move further you go till here could take an you could take your iterate all the way till here and then you see okay well my decrease hasn't started increase hasn't uh, hasn't kept up maybe i should i should uh, i should now revise my model and get to a new point or you might say well no okay let us give it a try let's let's increase alpha further and see if that works and then the function starts increasing and then you end up with somewhere here so you can see what's happening here is that there are the if as you go from in this entire range of alphas you encounter various types of situations you encounter situations where it seems like your decrease is uh, you've made a decrease but it could the function could decrease further you get to a situation you could get to a situation where you have made a decrease but the function cannot decrease you don't think the function can decrease any further in this direction you get to a uh, you 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 also you could also get to a situation where you have overcompensated you have gone to uh, you have taken too large a step 
and you you haven't you haven't really got the decrease that you think you should have got for example if you would take a decrease all the if you take a very large step you could end up you could end up here and you end up actually missing missing what could have potentially been a solution here also right so now the problem is there are infinitely many alphas to choose from and there is, we do not we, since we don't have the graph of the function the only way we can go about do, uh, about selecting the alpha is is through sort some sort of intelligent trial and error you might try this you might try that etc etc and then you realize you have to you you need to get uh, you, you have to uh, uh, sort of feel your way through and uh, and figure out what the correct level, correct amount of alpha should be 